It all begins with a red shirt. And thus, we start our Damien on Design. Today with Damien Farrell from Damien Farrell Design Group. Good morning. Good morning, Lucienne. What is your favorite color, by the way? Oh, I... Very good question. Green. Green followed shortly by, or right after by red. Well, that would explain your glasses. That would explain my glasses. <laughs> these are my, yes, these, these are my green architect glasses. They're fabulous. Yes, and then, then I have the black ones for the serious days. You can tell yeah, he's... For the serious meetings. He yeah. has great design in him just by looking at Damien. <laughs> but the red shirt we're referencing, I'm presuming, belonged to Neil Baudet, who is the Detroit Bureau Chief for the Wall Street Journal. It is so nice to finally make your acquaintance. You've been the Detroit Bureau Chief for how long now? Since the end of 2007, so just a little over four years. But I've been in the Detroit Bureau for the paper since two. 2004. And you, you prior were in Germany doing this. That's correct, yeah. I joined the journal in Germany. I was working over there for a Newswire. Uh, I was hired to, by the journal in Frankfurt in 1999. Uh, covered a few different things, including some 9-11 stuff. And then 2002, our auto reporter was uh, leaving Frankfurt, moving to Brussels. They need somebody to cover cars. And I raised my hand and said, hey, <laughs> I got a driver's license. I can do this. Well, also, clearly a passion for cars, too. We, we've discovered that and I in our chats. And the red shirt? The red shirt is why I'm here today. Um, I play hockey in an over 40 league uh, here in the Ann Arbor area in, in Chelsea at the game last Wednesday, a week ago Wednesday. Um, one of the guys on the team had a red shirt uh, under his gear from our sponsor Victory Lane Quick Oil Change and the, uh, the CEO and founder of uh, Victory Lane is on our team. I said, hey. Derek Oxender, yep. Derek Oxender. I said, and all hey, the business, yep. How do I get a red shirt? And he said, well, uh, we need a guest speaker at the Kiwanis Club <laughs> next Wednesday. If you do that, I'll give you a red shirt. So I said, fine, I'll, I'm happy to do that. And Wednesday, the Kiwanis Club had me in. I talked about some journalism and the stories behind the stories. And uh, I met uh, Julianne Williams there. She came right up to me and said, you know, um, uh, my boss has a uh, design show on the radio. And would, would you be ha Would you be interested in doing it? So here I am. Oh, I love this story and leave it to Julianne. She's it, incredible. Exactly. Uh, she produces Who else would this do that, segment right? and yeah. is a fantastic uh, administrative person for you in running your office. And she all sent me this things. text message. I thought she was joking. <laughs> she said I got the Detroit Bureau Chief for oh, the Wall Street, Street Journal. Journal. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Well, we continue our topic today uh, in this month of January talking about uh, the North American International Auto Show and the beautiful vehicles and maybe the not so beautiful. And we're going to have the two of you examine. Both of you yes. obviously have been to the show. You just went this week, Damien. Uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, no, the day before. Uh, yes, yes. I've just been. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And what was your impression just overall? I loved it. I, um, it, it was a real eye opener for me. I think the way that the local auto industry in particular has responded to issues of quality and design across the board, except for one, except for our Camel Award, which we'll give out at the end of the show. Um, I was blown away, truly, by the detail, um, not only of the displays, um, which we're, Neil and I are going to talk about in a second, but the quality and the fit and finish of our local cars is absolutely world class and you know we talked about that in the last two segments with both Larry's that we've had on mm -hmm. and they are absolutely right. I did all sorts of finger you know touch tests and the gaps between hoods and bodywork and so on and I loved what I saw. Um, I'm just going to chastise my, 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 I've driven Land Rovers now for 25 years continuously. Land Rover where were you? Um, Why weren't you there? You just won Car of the Year award for the Evoke. So no presence. No presence from Land Rover. Neil, why would that be? Do you know? <clears throat> well, uh, Land Rover and Jaguar were sold by Ford uh, to an Indian automaker, mm -hmm. and their sales have suffered. I mean, they yeah. North America has is a, a a very tough market for them right now, and their sales are down. And and we've seen this before. In in the recession, uh, Porsche pulled out of the North American Auto yeah. Show came back um, uh, after an absence of two years, but uh, it happens from time to time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you wrote a piece for the Wall Street Journal, Revitalized Detroit Makes Bold Bets on New Models, along with your colleague Jeff Bennett. Uh, is this the resurgence of Detroit? I think so. The, the mood of the show this year was very different than it, it, I've seen it in, in a long time. I agree. And it was very upbeat, and it was... The Detroit Three, Ford, GM, and Chrysler, all uh, were not only uh, proud of the cars, 
that they had to show off. At, but they seemed uh, really um, aggressive, not in a, in, a, in, a, in a mean way, but they just seemed ready to rock and roll in the, the United States auto market in a way we haven't seen in a long time. There was a confidence on the floor yeah, that's that what I it felt was. that I've never felt before, and a pride, mm -hmm. seriously a pride, when you talk to the people who were representing the cars on the floor for our three manufacturers here in, this, in our city. There seems to be a real connection between the uh, heads of these companies and the actual product that's coming out finally. Absolutely. I, I've said many times that uh, th there are many reasons why Detroit has, has bounced back, why Ford turned around on its own and GM and, and Chrysler uh, turned around in bankruptcy. And the big reason is they had a brain transplant. All three companies got, a great got new management, and uh, uh, Bill Ford at uh, Ford Motor Company made a very courageous decision. He was CEO and realized he's not the guy to do the job, and went out and found one of the best businessmen in the United States and probably the world in Alan Mulally, and Alan Mulally straightened out Ford without going through bankruptcy. Chrysler and, and GM both got new management through, uh, through bankruptcy, and they brought in people who look at reality as reality. Um, the previous management had been you know, um, immersed in just the Detroit culture for way too long and couldn't see that, uh, that there was a whole market out there for passenger cars and, and uh, cars that get good fuel economy and that uh, you can't just make the least expensive car possible and try to be competitive. Yeah. And so they've got a completely different approach now and as Damien mentioned, there is a confidence. In, you can see in the American engineers feel like the, the shackles are off, yes. the cost shackles are off. We can, we can uh, put an extra $2,000 in our car, so we can put new technology in our engines, and we can make our interiors richer and more plush. We can spend a little more on nicer plastics, not the cheap, hard stuff. And there's a real confidence yeah. there. And I, the other thing that struck me too, Lucien, is that <clears throat> Um, you know, when you read some of the stories about how these companies have been structured in the past and the, what would happen from the design department to the production line and what we ended up seeing on the showroom floors, mm -hmm. that things would just simply get dissected in the process. Now I think we are seeing what the designers envisage, what they draw, the arts, the sculpture of the cars is ending up on the showroom floor. And you know that because it's better design? It is absolutely better design. The proportions of things, the detail, the the crimping of the surfaces, and I want Neil to talk about this for a second because it really started with BMW and with Chris Bangle, and um, this when he started sculpting the sides of BMWs. And why don't you talk about that? Because your knowledge with him and the flack he took mm -hmm. um, is is an interesting sure in, story. In yeah. the the 90s, BMW uh, did this deep dive study into the future, and they at that time they they basically made three cars in three different sizes, and they were almost identical: the three series, five series, seven series. Right. And they looked down the road and they saw that people were going to want something different than that. The design they had was very classic and sort of engineering, straight lines, um, and what Bangle thought was that we're in a new era, it's a new generation of buyers, and he tried to come up with de designs that reflected the hand of man. So uh, the surfaces had unusual creases and were, were not just flat or, or uh, a, a perfect radial curve, they, the, the surfaces undulated. Um, on the sides of the cars, and he called that flame surfacing. And at the time, people, people, uh, he took some criticism for that. And some of the first designs were so shocking that uh, there was an online petition, stop Chris Bangle. And he took by the way, he's an American designer. Let's, is let's remind American everybody, from, American designer from, from Wisconsin. From Wisconsin, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, went to design school in California. And he's a really uh, very uh, gentlemanly uh, and soft-spoken guy, and I know the criticism, um, he took that kind of hard. And uh, But I think in the long term, he's really uh, defined the, the look of the auto industry because this this uh, um, a hand of man or the, these, uh, these sculpted um, uh, cars are pretty much what every automaker Everyone's is doing, doing now. It. And Everyone's you hear Hyundai, yep. Hyundai gets a lot of attention for its design, and they call it fluidic design. Well, well fluidic design, <laughs> flame surfacing, yep. they're all talking about this.